So, the final trailer for Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald came out last week, giving us a final glimpse of what we can expect from the second instalment of, of the Fantastic Beasts series, set in the Wizarding World series of films. Apparently that's what they're called now. The trailer's solid, it's overflowing in its presentation of visual set pieces, but primarily it focuses on presenting the motivations of the main characters for this next film. Seeing the trailer focus more on this aspect of the film got me thinking about just how much I enjoyed the characters in the first Fantastic Beasts, especially Newt Scamander, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. What makes Newt different, and why to me he stands out as a brilliant character. I have heard some debates around Newt Scamander's character in the previous film. Among other things, I think a lot of people find him boring and uninteresting, but in my opinion, all those people are wrong. In fact, I found his character to be the best part of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I think a lot of the reason people might not enjoy his character is because Newt doesn't fill the role that Harry does. Harry's the relatable protagonist, a kind of pseudo-blank slate that you can imagine yourself as, and project yourself onto. As a character, Harry is mostly devoid of any particular striking personality traits. With Harry's type of character, we start their introduction, they enter into a new strange world, and we follow them all the way to the end of their story, a la, you know, Neo in the Matrix. I'm not saying that this style of character is a bad thing, it can just be tiresome to see all the time. In Fantastic Beasts, however, Newt springs into existence fully formed. He's already a brilliant and intelligent wizard in his own right, and has pre-established motivations and personality quirks that are often left behind in the protagonist building machine. He wants to protect and keep his animals safe, and wants to continue to travel, learn, and write his book. We don't need an origin with Newt, so we don't get one, and the film's better for it. I found this thoroughly refreshing, especially in a series that had so heavily leaned on having that blank vehicle to drive the audience through the story. Newt's more reserved personality and stumbling speech is another excellent point of difference to me. People might find it annoying, but I find Eddie Redmayne's performance charming and extremely likeable. Harry's just the normal kid, palatable for all kinds of audiences, made in the standard Hollywood protagonist mould and that's exactly how Harry is played by Daniel Radcliffe. Eddie Redmayne's performance is quirky and fun, but he manages to portray a variety of emotions, whether it's Newt's shy and reserved side or a more serious side to the character. Beginning Fantastic Beasts following an already fully formed character is what has really set these films apart from the Potter series. I previously mentioned this final trailer focuses heavily on establishing character motivations. Dumbledore tells Newt he has to do some stuff for him because he can't himself. Does, does that sound familiar to you? and Grindelwald wants to incite a war between the Wizarding World and humans. That's also vaguely familiar to me. Non-Wizarding Worlds have been at peace for over a century. Grindelwald wants to see that peace destroyed. You want me to hunt him down? To kill him? Dumbledore, why can't you go? I cannot move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. The plot of this film series is shaping up to be very reminiscent of the previous Potter films, and yet Newt is the point of difference to the original series. Within the same story framework, Harry constantly has the plot pushing him ahead, forcing him to change, grow up, and become the chosen one that he was always meant to be, whereas Newt doesn't have a need to change to serve the overarching story, just to help by putting his already established talents to good use. In the first Fantastic Beasts, Newt was a semi-third party that only became involved in the events of the overarching world-dooming plot by happenstance. Now that he has proven his mettle, Dumbledore in the trailer for this second outing seems to be swooping in to ask a favour of Newt, to hunt down Grindelwald. He seems to be doing this here not because Newt is the proverbial chosen one, but because his character has shown ability and a sense of morality. Newt doesn't want power to be a hero or to defeat the big scary bad guy, he just wants to do what's right and this is what I find so engaging about him. As a main character, he has his own problems, separate from the plot, and those are the things that keep him moving forward. Newt has stakes on the table that are smaller and more nuanced than just the usual odd, oh, it's the end of the world again, and he doesn't want to involve himself. In the final trailer, he makes it clear that he doesn't choose sides. He'd rather just stay out of it all, but he must become involved because it's the right thing for him to do. Crimes of Grindelwald seems to be shaping up well, and I'm interested to see where they take Newt in this new story. I'll wait and hope that they don't take away his character traits and turn him into a one-dimensional protagonist who just serves as a catalyst against evil. However, with Newt stating that he doesn't do sides, the trailer seems to indicate this won't happen, but only time can tell. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. We've got new podcasts coming out every week here at Film Bunker, and thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye.